Okay, hi, my name is Dr. Steve Mortazavi, and I'm here today with patient Gladys, and we're going to be showing you today about a spinal cord stimulator and how to implant a percutaneous spinal cord stimulator. I'm at Valley Pain Specialist in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, and at the end of the program, we'll give you our contact information if you have any more questions and you'd like to know more information out about this procedure. So Gladys is a patient that we've been seeing for a number of years now, and she has chronic intractable back pain, which runs down her left greater than right lower extremity. Correct, Gladys? Yes. And I believe you have a history of back surgery in the past? Three. Three back surgeries, as well as multiple injections that we performed in this office, correct? Correct. Medications and so forth as well. Back in uh, about three, four months ago, we performed what's called a spinal cord stimulator trial for this patient, which is essentially uh, another uh, similar procedure, which is also on our YouTube channel you can take a look at, where a temporary lead or wire was placed in the back, and electrical sensations and impulses were given to the patient's back and spinal cord. And at that point, Gladys noticed that she got a lot of relief, and based upon that, the decision was made to go ahead and proceed with a permanent spinal cord stimulator implant, which is what we're going to be doing today. Okay, so basically we're going to show you the procedure in condensed format, and uh, if you have any questions, like I said, we'll have our contact information at the end of the video. Okay, so now we have the patient positioned on the operating room table, lying on her belly, and this is her back here and her buttocks here. Behind me on the x-ray machine, you'll see that's a floral image of her lumbar spine, and you'll be able to see the extensive hardware that the patient has from her prior thoracolumbar fusions. So what we're going to do here is look inside of her in real time with the fluoroscope and try to enter the epidural space in her spine through some small openings that are very hard to see right now. And we'll be using a technique called loss of resistance technique. So as the needle enters the correct space, I'll be able to feel a change in the resistance to injection, in this case of air. It's very difficult sometimes, and especially in patients with extensive hardware, but that's the technique we're going to use. So as we look around, and we'll unlock the waddle here, we'll take a look. You'll see that our hardware extends all the way up here to about T9, and then all the way down here to her sacrum, or to the S1 area. So we're gonna try to get in somewhere in the lower, the upper lumbar spine, and then we're going to, once we get in the needle into the epidural space, we're going to advance a small wire into the epidural space under real-time x-ray guidance to approximately here. So the idea is we'll try to get in here, and then once the needle's in, we'll pass a small wire through that needle to have it rest on the back of her spinal cord at about the T8 or T9 area. And the idea is that if we can deliver electrical sensations and stimulation to the back of her spinal cord, we can replace the sensation of her intractable back pain and sciatica with a more pleasurable sensation that she'll like. It'll be a buzzing or a vibration or a more pleasurable type of sensation. So that's the rationale for this type of procedure. And again, we have shown this on a prior video for a trial. The main difference today is that once we get the lock, the wire or the percutaneous lead in the correct spot and the patient is happy with where she feels the paresthesia, we do have folks from Medtronic here as well, the company we're using, who will be talking with the patient to make sure the patient is satisfied. Once we get patient satisfaction with the lead, we'll go ahead and put a battery in right where I've shown you here, and I don't know if you can zoom in here, but the battery is going to be about the size of an Oreo cookie. It looks like a pacemaker, essentially manufactured by the same company who makes pacemakers, and we'll connect this battery over to the wire underneath the skin. We'll tunnel a cable underneath, and then everything will be internal. She'll be able to control the sensation, the electrical sensations that are delivered by putting a magnet over the back of her left buttock area and be able to turn it on, off, and change the settings. Okay, so we'll cut out now, and then we'll come back as soon as we're able to get the needle into the correct spot. Okay, so now I've entered what I feel is the epidural space using the loss of resistance technique and I believe the needle is in the correct epidural space. So if I direct your attention to the fluoroscopy monitor on the screen there, this line here is the needle. That is the tip of the needle and that is the back of the needle. And it's going right into this little opening right here which is between the two lamina. Okay, so that's the what I believe is the epidural space. 
if I can show you, it may be a little hard to, to zoom in with the monitor, but this is the actual percutaneous lead or wire. I'm not sure if you can actually see this. I'll try to hold still. There's four contacts at the end of this wire. And what I'm going to try to do is place this wire in through that needle and advance it up about maybe eight to 10 inches under x-ray guidance, okay? So let's go ahead and see if we can do it.
So now I've created a pocket in her left buttock area, and of course we still have the back incision here. I'm going to use this tunneling device, which is almost just like a skewer or shish kebab, to connect the two areas together. I want to make sure that I stay just under the skin in a subcutaneous plane so that I don't get too deep. It can be a little uncomfortable. incision and it's right there so now I'll unscrew this from the end of the skewer and there's a plastic sheath around which I'll be able to feed this wire from this incision to this incision so let's go ahead and we'll do that now so now I've created a conduit with this sheath I've fed the percutaneous lead through it and I simply gently pull it through and now I have the lead ending in the pocket. I'll attach an extension cable to this lead. I'll, extension, I'll attach the extension cable then also to the battery, which we'll show you in a little bit. Implant the battery, irrigate out the incisions, and close her up. Okay, okay so now what we've done is we've, uh, ang we've tunneled the wire over to the to pocket incision. We've attached an extension cable onto it, which goes from the, the wire to the battery. And this is the Medtronic non- rechargeable impulse generator battery that we're going to be implanting into the buttock. We've just tested it out to make sure that everything's working right now. So as of right now, the system is perfectly intact and we're getting ready to implant it. So basically we'll coil the extension cable around, just tuck that into her buttock area here. And there should be enough room to have it fit nicely like that. We leave a little bit of relief Strainly in the dorsal incision, a little bit of a loop in case something gets pulled, the wire won't get pulled out of her out of her spinal spinous process area. It'll be perfect. So we're gonna go ahead and irrigate out the dorsal incision, the pocket incision, and close. And that's basically it.